Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We are going to be in Microsoft Flight Simulator today. I don't have it loaded up because we're not going to actually do a flight. We're going to take a look at two things that people have been asking. Pilot to ATC and ATC Chatter. What are they? How do they work standalone? How do they work together? And a common mistake that I see many people making in trying to get them to work together. I made it and I want to make sure that you don't. So let's get into it. All right, let's start with ATC Chatter. What is it really? ATC Chatter is nothing other than pre-recorded sound files that you can play in the background to get full immersion into the sim. You don't interact with it. It has nothing to do with your flight or talking to ATC. It's just in the background to give realism. That's essentially what it is. And what you do is you, once you've installed everything, you go ahead and open the ATC Chatter program. And this is basically the program here. You just make sure that you assign the correct uh, place. I happen to be in the United States. Um, I don't have anything else downloaded, but you can keep downloading for wherever you uh, want to fly. And then once that's set up, you can adjust the volume here, and then you simply say, play chatter, and you click the tick box. Does its thing in the background, and this is usually for people who aren't going to be using any sort of uh, ATC, either the default or like a standalone program like Pilot to ATC, which is what we're going to talk about in a second. This just plays in the background, and it gives you immersion that simple. Now let's go ahead and shift over to Pilot to ATC. Now Pilot to ATC is a completely different beast. Rather than having chatter that's pre-recorded in the background that you don't interact with, Pilot to ATC is a new way that you can actually talk with ATC. And when I mean talk, I mean really talk. Like you've got your headset on and you have a button maybe programmed on your keyboard or on your yoke it's a push to talk button you press it and you can actually interact with AI <laughs> you know uh, software based ATC and that's where you give your commands you re your request for taxi your request for takeoff they'll communicate with you when you need to change to a frequency but instead of pressing a button on your keyboard to just have it speak you know for you as the pilot you have to say everything into the microphone. So that is essentially what's happening with Pilot to ATC. So people that are using Pilot to ATC want a little bit more realism. They want to be able to give the commands. And a lot of people like Pilot to ATC as kind of a stepping stone toward using VATSIM. Um, and of course, with VATSIM, you're on with an actual person. They're going to give you requests. You're going to repeat them back. You're going to ask for requests. But for people that don't aren't you know are intimidated by VATSIM this is a very good way because no one's gonna be yelling at you no one's gonna say hey you need to get this right you need to look at this um, if it doesn't work they're just gonna say did not understand or they're going to ask that you identify yourself again because they, they just didn't understand your command but this is an example of what to expect with pilot to ATC Los Angeles Center on 119.05, Kodiak 7 Julia Zulu. We've talked a little bit about what each program is, both ATC Chatter and Pilot to ATC, and using them standalone is very straightforward. Using ATC Chatter by itself is simple. You open up the standalone program, set your volume, make sure you're in the right country that you're going to be flying, and hit Play Chatter. It's that simple. It is a standalone program that will be important to remember in just a second. But if we want to go ahead and use Pilot to ATC just by itself, we open up Pilot to ATC, we click on this config button, and we're brought up with all of our settings here. Using the two together, which they can, and it's really great how the, inter how the integration is, during the installation process of ATC Chatter, there is a PDF that comes with it, and it gives you all of the steps. If you follow all the steps, it's basically going to take the pre-recorded sound files that come with ATC Chatter 
and you're basically assigning those to a folder within pilot to ATC. This is the integration. The integration is moving these folders over. You don't need to do anything more other than to go into pilot to ATC and in the sounds section, this is where you'll configure some of the settings to get it to work together. You're essentially using pilot to ATC to control how ATC chatter works. You do need to be mindful of these settings here. We're not going to do like a whole walkthrough on the installation. The installation is actually pretty straightforward. The one thing that you want to do is go to this default region and make sure you see all of these countries here. That's how you're going to know that you put the ATC chatter sound files in the correct pilot to ATC folder according to the instructions. Once that's good, you want to make sure that play chatter is checked uh, and then you can assign these uh, to your taste. The amount of time pause between uh, between playback, minimum and maximum times. So sometimes it'll wait five. In this case, it'll take f a minimum of five seconds between calls before it plays in the background. Now there's two really important things that you need to look at. One is the chatter volume. This is the volume that you want that ATC chatter to be working in the background. If it's too loud, you make that adjustment here. Something that's also important is I have set a button here and this allows you to toggle ATC chatter on and off. For example, I do that a lot when I'm doing a video and if I need to explain something to you, I'm not actually talking to the air traffic controller here on pilot to ATC, which would then say, okay, ATC chatter gets to run in the background, but then I can't talk to you or you just want to look at a chart and concentrate on your landing or your arrival and you don't want that chatter going on because so create a button where you can toggle it on and off if you don't want it uh, to be playing all the time in the background. So essentially what's happening is when you use the push to talk button on your keyboard or on your yoke to talk to ATC on pilot to ATC, what it's doing with this integration is it's temporarily shutting off ATC chatter because you don't want it to actually be playing in the background so that you can't hear your call and you can't hear the ATC reply. So keep that in mind. If everything's working properly, when you hit the push to talk button to talk to the controller, ATC chatter shuts off. That's what we want to happen. You're also controlling the volume of ATC chatter in the, back, in the background and you have a button set so that you can toggle ATC chatter on and off. Those are the most important things to remember, but a lot of people run into one problem. Remember how we said that ATC chatter is essentially a standalone program? When we open up that program on our computer, it plays in the background and it takes control of all of the chatter. Meaning, if it's open while you're trying to use both programs, all of these settings, like to play the chatter, or the pause between the files, or how loud ATC chatter is, which is normally controlled with here within Pilot to ATC, including the button to toggle it on and off, you will lose all functionality of that because the standalone program ATC chatter will take over. You need to make sure if you want to run Pilot to ATC, and you want, so you're giving your commands and requests uh, to the tower and everything, and between your calls, you want ATC chatter to run in the background, you need to make sure that the standalone program, ATC chatter, is not open. Not open. Now, it's not very clear with the instructions uh, in the installation. I believe the wording that they use is, in order to, in order to use ATC chatter and pilot to ATC, it says something to the effect of you don't have to have ATC chatter, the standalone program open. And it's kind of misleading because what the way it sounds is you can, but you don't have to. And the reality is if you want all of these settings to work so that pilot to ATC is controlling when ATC chatter comes on, what volume that voice is and to get the button to toggle ATC chatter on and off, if you want all of this functionality, the reality is you cannot have ATC chatter program open. 
a standalone program. The integration is already there once you've moved the sound files from ATC Chatter into the folder of Pilot to ATC. That's all the integration you need. The rest is all these settings, but they will only take effect if you have ATC Chatter off, to have that program closed. The only time you are going to have ATC, the ATC Chatter program open is if you are going to use it standalone in the background of Microsoft Flight Simulator and you are not at all going to be using Pilot to ATC. That's the only time you open it. It's kind of a cool feature though because not everyone's using Pilot to ATC and sometimes you want to use it, sometimes you don't. You can always have ATC Chatter running in the background. Open the program if you just want to use it without Pilot to ATC or any other ATC program. But if you want it to be integrated with Pilot to ATC and have all of these settings within Pilot to ATC control the chatter coming from ATC Chatter, leave the program ATC Chatter closed on your computer. That is really the biggest thing that that got me hung up and because I was going in and I was changing all these settings and nothing was taking effect. It's because I, as part of the installation process, I had the standalone ATC Chatter program open. It then took over and rendered all of these settings null and void, essentially. It takes over. So just remember your integration of Pilot to ATC and ATC Chatter is simply moving the sound files that come with ATC Chatter into the Pilot to ATC folder as per the ATC Chatter instructions. Follow those instructions. Just remember to use them together. You need to make sure that the ATC Chatter program is turned off. The rest is already integrated and you'll be good to go. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, short little instructional video tying Pilot to ATC and ATC Chatter. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so you can see all of my videos. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And that about does it for this video. We will see you on the next one. Take care.